But that will move on to example number two. So again, uh, in this example, uh, we don't list the number of shares because it's all assumed uh, to be the same number of shares. So uh, let's just say 100 shares uh, for argument's sake. So uh, again, we're going to buy some Apple shares for $50 a share. Six years later, we're going to short Apple shares. Once again, we have an appreciated financial position, so therefore we have a crossing trade. Again, on October 30, 2003, we're going to cover the short. But here's where the different lot, difference lies between this and the previous example. We're going to buy a put option, exactly what I described when I was explaining risk reduction transactions. A put option is a risk reducer. So the, we again qualified for rule number one because we got rid of the cover. We got rid of the short. We, we covered prior to January 30th, 2004. We held on to the shares for 60 days. But rule number three, we failed. We have a risk reduction transaction. So as soon as we fail the risk reduction transaction, we would have to consider, um, OK, we've failed the CTE. We might qualify for the SHE, but only if the risk reduction transaction is disposed of, which it isn't, not at any point that's relevant for 2003. So the very fact that we have a risk reduction transaction, we haven't gotten rid of it, means we're going to fail the closed transaction exception. We also close, uh, failed the serial hedge exception because we never got rid of the risk reduction transaction. So here's the first example of a failure, which means those, those shares that we bought at $50 each and we shorted for $100 each, we have to recognize for our 2003 taxes a $50 capital gain per share of Apple that was involved in the short trade. It will incidentally also affect the holding period of the Apple as well as the cost basis of the shares that were involved. They'll be bumped from $50 a share up to $100 per share, all normal part of the regular constructive sale rule. With that, we'll move on to a, a twist on the previous example. So we're going to buy 200 shares of Apple this time. We're going to short 200 shares of Apple, same dates as the previous examples. We're going to cover the short, but this time on a risk reduction transaction, we're only going to reduce the risk of half of the original shares. So that's going to throw an interesting twist into things. So once again, check the rules from top to bottom, one through four. Remember, rules one and two always must be satisfied, which they are. The, the crossing transaction is eliminated for January 30th of 2004. And the original shares of Apple are held for 60 days beyond that date in which the crossing transaction has been eliminated. There is, however, risk reduction transaction, the put on 100 of the original 200 shares. Now, the analysis is a little complex here. I put it in two bullet points. Let me walk, read these verbatim, and then I'll try to explain them a little more in depth. The situation for 100 shares fails to qualify for the closed transaction exception. It failed because there's a risk reduction transaction on those 100 shares. So a constructive sale needs to be recognized on 100 shares. The other 100 shares have no risk reduction done for them. They get a clean pass. So of the 200 shares that were crossed, 100 shares passes the CTE, and therefore there is no constructive sale for those 100 shares. For the other 100 shares, there's a risk reduction transaction, and we consider the SHE, which we will in later examples, but the SHE also fails, and therefore we have to recognize $50 of gain per share on 100 of the original 200 shares. And Amber hasn't called me yet, so we've got time to keep going. First 97, we don't just buy 100 shares. We buy 200 shares, but we buy them in separate transactions. When we do the shorts on January 1st of 2003, we short again, twice, 100 shares, another 100 shares. Then when we cover, we cover both of the short lots. So it's like we did everything in example one twice. Here's where it gets interesting. So why would we do all this? 
um, because when we buy a put option on November 15th for 100 shares of AAPL, we have a risk reducer. Now, we know risk reducers kill the CTE. We've seen that. But what's interesting is the question is, can the put kill the CTE on both the separate crossing trades? We had two buys, two shorts. Therefore, we had two crossing trades. Can a single risk reduction qualify to break the CT for both? The answer is no. It's also share for share. Once a risk reducer has been applied to one crossing trade to break the CT, those same shares in the risk reducer cannot be applied to another crossing trade. It's one or the other. It's taxpayer friendly that way. It's not. You can't just uh, do one risk reducer and worry, oh no, every crossing trade I, I possibly have out there automatically fails. No, you only do it on a share for share basis. So again, the consequences are the CTE succeeds for one of the original two lots, the CTE fails for the other. Um, I'm sorry, there's a typo in it. It says the CTE fails for one of the three lots, means one of the two lots. So a risk reducer for one position cannot also serve as a risk reducer for another. With that, we're moving on to example.